Hello there. 2022 was a great year for Sonic, and considering how rough the past decade has been, I am so relieved that I'm able to say that. So I thought it'd be fun to take a look back at the year and discuss the best and worst parts of the year in regards to the almighty Sonic. But I want to do it with a twist. I'm going to be ranking every big Sonic project that released this year from worst to best. Those projects being Sonic Movie 2, Sonic Origins, Sonic Frontiers, and Sonic Prime. Now, I want to preface today's video by saying that by no means am I trying to be objective with this video. All four of these projects released this year appeal to completely different crowds, so it's kind of impossible to be objective with my rankings, you know? Like, how can you measure Sonic Frontiers, which is a video game, to Sonic Movie 2, which is... A, a movie like like you can't really do that they are two different forms of media so no matter what you're going to have some bias in what you prefer so i'm just saying if i drop a take that is a bit too spicy then then just relax take a moment to breathe because my opinion is not an assault on yours even though l l let's be honest here i i do have the correct opinion about 98 percent of the time anyways with that said let's jump right into it Starting off in last place, we have Sonic Prime. I just remembered that I cannot show footage for this one, so, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I hope you guys really like my face, because you're gonna be seeing a lot of it. Alright, here, here's the thing. When I first watched Sonic Prime, I really liked it. I would probably place it around the number three spot if I was still in my honeymoon phase. However, after sitting on it for a while, I've been looking back and noticing a lot of glaring issues with the show. Like how the show is canon, despite that making no sense, because Sonic's character in the show is nothing like how he is from the games. Or how the entire first eight episodes was just used for exposition. Like, all they did was set up future episodes, and that, that was it. I feel like I would have enjoyed Sonic Prime a bit more if it was released in 2023 with 16 episodes rather than 8, because maybe then the plot could have actually progressed a little bit. For the eight episodes that we did get, it was decent. I can't really say much about it because... It wasn't really that special, in my opinion. However, on the flip side, I am actually very excited for Sonic Prime because the future does seem very ambitious. With what the episodes were setting up with the multiverses and the Egg Council looking for power, like, that that looks like we're about to get some peak fiction content. So maybe after they release a few more episodes, I'll feel a bit better about it. It might even make it higher up on this list. Regardless, I thought Sonic Prime was pretty cool. It's just that when you compare it to some of the other stuff that released this year, I just don't think it lives up to those. Anyways, next up we have Sonic Movie 2. I can't show footage of this one either. You know, this is why video games are a better form of media than movies. All movie fans do is just watch mediocre superhero movies until Batman or Spider-Man finally drops something good, or they talk about why The Big Lebowski is a good movie. Anyways, this movie proved me wrong. Before the release of Sonic 2, I didn't really care about the movie that much, like, uh, I thought it was cool that, you know, Sonic was getting a movie. I, I mean, it's not harmless at all, right? The main point I'm trying to make here is that I did not care about the movie. I thought it was just gonna be another boring family film featuring these Sonic characters we all know and love, and that was it. However, uh, upon watching it, I, I, was, I was pleasantly surprised. I really liked what I saw. It's nothing crazy, it's not gonna blow your socks off like Fight Club will, but it, it, I honestly had a great time watching this movie. There was a lot of references to the games, and you know, the story was actually somewhat interesting, which was very surprising to me. It explored the ideas of power and the responsibilities that came with it. It went a lot deeper than I thought it would. You know, after reading the script, I think I could have worded that a little bit better. Overall though, Sonic Movie 2 was a great movie to see, especially as a Sonic fan. I'm obviously ranking Sonic Movie 2 at number 3, however I feel like most people would rank it at number 1. And that's solely because I saw very few people actually dislike the movie. With Sonic Frontiers Prime and Origins, even though some of those were positively received for the most part, they still had large groups of people who did not like them. I didn't really see a large vocal part of the community who did not like Sonic Movie 2. It seemed like universally everyone kind of enjoyed it. So for me, I'm ranking this as number three. However, I completely understand if you put this as your number one. 
Okay, next up we have Sonic Frontiers at the number two spot, and finally, I can show footage for this one. So, I want to say right off the bat that Sonic Frontiers, from my perspective of being a fan of the games more than anything else, was the most important part of the year. I know that everyone watching this video is currently doing the math in their head right now, so they know what's coming at the number one spot, but listen, I still think... Sonic Frontiers is the biggest W of the year. And that is because when it comes to the games, Sonic Frontiers is going to leave the biggest impact out of any other project that released. It was the first positively received 3D Sonic game since Sonic Generations, and that game came out in 2011. Dude, I wasn't even in the third grade when that came out. But the reasons why it's positively received is more important in my opinion. Number one, you have the open zone formula. They struck gold because this formula just simply works. There's something so addicting about running around in open level format and doing a bunch of platforming challenges at very fast speeds. That stuff is cool. Number two, we finally got a good Sonic story. It isn't perfect. It definitely does have issues with concluding everything in the story, but it is light years ahead of anything we've had in the past decade. Our favorite Sonic characters feel like characters again. I, I love it. And then number three, the meta era is dead. The games are finally being taken seriously again, and if you just take one look at the supersonic boss fights, you can tell that's one of the coolest things ever implemented in a 3D Sonic game. When the heavy metal hits, you just feel the power, you know? So overall, I think Sonic Frontiers is a fantastic video game and is a massive W for Sonic. So I'll be leaving it at the number two spot on this ranking. All right, at our number one spot, we, we have Sonic Origins. Now, please, guys, listen to me. I do not think Sonic Origins deserves to be number one. For as much enjoyment that I've had with the game, it is very clear that Sega rushed this one out the door and it went through some development troubles. Sega has put more passion and effort into other projects such as Sonic Frontiers, so Sonic Frontiers definitely deserves a W more than Sonic Origins. Let's make that clear. However, if I was to measure each of these four projects by how much value they give to me as a Sonic fan, unfortunately, I have to put Sonic Origins at number one. Simply put, Sonic Origins gave me a way to play the classic Sonic games on all platforms with widescreen and the drop dash. And on top of that, for the first time ever, we got a good Sonic CD port on PC. Look, I, I love Christian Wyatt. He is a beautiful young man. But you have no idea how unstable that PC port is. I, I can't stand it anymore. With Sonic Origins, it is a buttery smooth 60 frames per second with none of the annoyances that the PC port previously had. Here's the thing. I love the classic Sonic games. They are hands down some of my favorite platformers of all time. And to a further extent, probably some of my favorite video games of all time. So if you were to ask me which of these four projects I would be spending the most time with during the next decade, I would answer Sonic Origins. And the main reasons why is because if I ever wanted to take the classic Sonic games on the go, I could with the Nintendo Switch, and I can finally run Sonic CD stably. Both of those factors, in my opinion, creates an excellent package for me. And also, I'm not using this as a defense for the product, but I've just downloaded a few mods and now pretty much most of my issues with the collection are gone. It is no longer blurry, I got the Sonic 3 soundtrack, I got Roll Lock turned off, and I got Lives back. Those mods pretty much adjusted this collection to what I wanted it to be. So that's why I'm putting Sonic Origins at the number one spot, and you don't have to agree. In fact, I, I don't even expect you to agree. You can agree, you can disagree, it doesn't matter to me. Just if you want to, leave your thoughts down below. I'm interested in what you guys have to say and what your rankings are for each of these projects. Do you think Sonic Frontiers was number one, or maybe Sonic Movie 2 was number one, or maybe you like me and you like Sonic Origins? I don't know. You tell me. Anyways, that's all I got to say on the subject, so make sure to like, comment, favorite, subscribe, and hit that bell with post notifications on. Anyways, I love you guys. Peace out. My chill members are Ethan K78, Snack Pigeon, The Nice Guy Year 567, Snicks, Archix YZ, Bananas, JNXV, Jennian Ring, Psych Man 715, Psych Cub, Thomas One Ride, Chip Chip Chop, The Squeaker Nerd, uh, Super Shacks Boom, Psych Extreme, Super Saiyan Psych. Thank you all for supporting the channel. That was a lot, and it was all in rearrange order. That was weird. Anyways, thank you for watching today's video. Make sure to click one of the end card screen videos here. I love you guys. Merry Christmas. Peace out.